Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, you will learn how to host this HTML website on an EC2 instance. To complete this project, we are going to follow these steps. First, we are going to choose the region where we will launch our EC2 instance. Then we will create a security group and open port 80 and port 22. Next, we will launch an EC2 instance and make sure we add security group and the key pair. Then we are going to SSH into the EC2 instance and install the necessary software that our website needs to run. Once we've done that, we will put our web files in the HTML directory on our EC2 instance. Once we have put all the web files in the HTML directory, the last thing we are going to do is start the Apache service. So to start, let's go to the management console. In the management console, according to our steps, the first thing we are going to do is choose the region. To choose a region in the management console, if you look in the upper right hand corner, here you will see currently I am in the Northern Virginia region. If you want to choose any other region, all you have to do is click this drop down and you will see all the regions here. We are going to launch our EC2 instance in the Northern Virginia region. And to select any region, all you have to do is click on it. I'm already in the Northern Virginia region, so I'll click out. For the next step, we are going to create a security group and open port 80 and port 22. Opening port 80 will allow users on the internet to access your website and opening port 22 will allow you to SSH into your EC2 instance. To create the security group, I want you to type VPC in this search box. I'm going to type VPC. Then under service, select VPC. In your VPC dashboard, on the left side, I want you to scroll down to security and under security, select security groups. Once you have select security group, the next thing I want you to do is click create security group up here. Then the first thing we are going to do is give our security group a name. Once you've given your security group a name, as you can see, I call the web server security group. We are going to enter the description. This security group is going to allow access on port 80 and port 22. And I have entered that as my description. The next thing we will do is select the VPC that we want to create the security group in. And currently this VPC is selected. If you want to remove it, just click this X button. You will see a list of all the VPCs you have in the region. Currently, I only have one VPC in this region and it is my default VPC. This is also the VPC we will be using to complete this project. So I'll select it. Then you can scroll down. Under inbound rule, the first rule we are going to add is on port 80. Opening port 80 will allow users on the internet to access our website. So I'm going to click add rule. The first rule we are going to add is HTTP. So click this drop down and look for HTTP. I'll select HTTP here. And as you can see, HTTP is always on port 80. The next thing we are going to do is under source. We are going to allow traffic coming on port 80 to come anywhere from the internet. So under source, I want you to click this drop down. And I want you to select anywhere on IPv4. Once you select anywhere on IPv4, it is going to put this 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 here. Or you could have also typed it here. For example, if I remove it, I can type it here. I can type 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and press enter. And it will also give me the same thing. AWS just makes it easy to select it here. The next thing we are going to do is click add rule again. We are going to select this drop down. And the next rule we are going to add is for SSH. So under this drop down, select SSH. And SSH is always on port 22. Under source, I want you to select this drop down. And this time we are going to select my IP. So when you select my IP, it is going to populate your IP address here. And what this means is, when traffic is coming on port 22, the traffic will only be allowed if it is coming from my IP address. 
So remember port 22 allows you to SSH into your EC2 instance. And for security best practice, you should always limit the IP address that can SSH into your EC2 instance to your IP address. So these are the two rules I want you to open. The first one is port 80 coming from anywhere on IPv4. And the second one is SSH and make sure that is limited to your IP address. Once you've done that, scroll down and click create security group. And there you go, we have successfully created our security group. The next thing we are going to do is launch our EC2 instance. To launch your EC2 instance, I want you to click in this search box and type EC2. Then I want you to select EC2 under services. Then on this page, we are going to create our EC2 instance. Currently, I am on the EC2 dashboard. So if you don't see this page, just select EC2 dashboard up here. Once you've select the EC2 dashboard, we are going to click launch instance here and click launch instance again. On this page, the first thing we will do is give our EC2 instance a name. I'll call it my web server. Once you've given your EC2 instance a name, scroll down. Under application and OS images, select the quick start tab. And under the quick start tab, select Amazon Linux. The AMI we want to use is Amazon Linux 2. So make sure Amazon Linux 2 is selected here. And if you look, it is the free tier one. Scroll down. Under instance type, it is going to be T2 micro. And for our key pair, we'll select this drop down and select the key pair we created previously. Then scroll down. Under network settings, select edit. For the VPC, all the VPC in your account will be listed here. Currently, we only have one VPC, which is the default VPC. This is the VPC we will launch the EC2 instance in. Select it. Under subnets, select this drop down and you can launch your EC2 instance in any subnet you want. I'll select the US East 1B. Then scroll down. Under security groups, we will select an existing security group. Then select this drop down and select the web server security group you created previously. And under storage, we will leave the storage as default. Scroll down. These are all the settings we need to configure the EC2 instance. You can also review the settings here, then click launch instance. We have successfully launched the EC2 instance. Click view all instances. And there you go. We have launched the EC2 instance. You can see the name I gave it is my web server. It is currently in the running state. I'm going to click refresh here to check the status check. And you can see the status check is initializing. We are going to wait for our EC2 instance to pass the status check. Then the next thing we will do is SSH into our EC2 instance. I'm going to click refresh again. And there you go. My EC2 instance has passed the status check. The next thing we are going to do is SSH into our EC2 instance. To SSH into our EC2 instance, I'm going to select my EC2 instance here. And once you select your EC2 instance, under the details tab, it is going to give you information about your EC2 instance. You can use this to drag this up if you don't see it. The first thing I want you to do is under public IPv4 address, I want you to click this box. When you click this box, it is going to copy your public IPv4 address for you. So click it to copy the IPv4 address. Then the next thing I want you to do is open party. Once you open party, under session, we are going to type EC2 hyphen user at the IP address we copied down here. So let me move it up. The host name is ec 2 user at the IP address we copied down here. So I'm going to paste that IP address after the at sign. Once you have pasted your IP address, the next thing I want you to do is come to SSH here and click the plus sign. Once you have clicked the plus sign, it should open this drop down for you. I want you to select auth. So don't click the plus sign to select auth. Then here, you are going to browse to where you save your private key pair. I'll click browse. 
and I am going to browse to where I saved the private key for my key pair. It is in my downloads directory. So here, this is it. I'll select it and click open. And once you click open, it is going to put the path to your private key here. One more thing we can do on this page is increase our font. So this is not mandatory, but if the font is too small, you can increase the size here. So under windows, select appearance and for font settings, select change. And here you can increase your font size. I always put it on 18 and click OK. To SSH into your EC2 instance, the main thing you need to do is under session, make sure you enter EC2 iPhone user at the IP address. Then you come down to SSH, come to Alt, then make sure you've specified the path to your private key. Those are the two mandatory things you need to do. Once you've done that, we are going to click open. And it is going to give you this warning sign. Click yes or OK. And there you go. We have SSH into our EC2 instance. Once we have SSH into our EC2 instance, the next thing we are going to do is install the software that our website needs to work properly on this EC2 instance. Before we start installing the software on our EC2 instance, there's something I want to show you. In my GitHub account, the web files for the website we are going to host on our EC2 instance is in the TechMax repository. So if I select it, you will see all the web files here. I will leave the link to this repository in this video's description. One more thing I want to show you is to install our website, we are going to use these commands. So these are all the commands that we will use to install our website on the EC2 instance. I'm going to explain what each of these command means as we run them. So I'll put them to the side here and I will open my party session again. The next thing we are going to do is run this command. The first command is sudo su and that just allows you to change to root user. So here I'm going to type sudo su. Press enter. The second command will allow us to update our EC2 instance. So that is yum update minus y. So you can copy that command and paste it here. Once you copy the command, to paste it, all you have to do is right click. Once you paste it, press enter. And what this is going to do is, it is going to download all the security patches and update for your EC2 instance. We are going to wait for the shell prompt to be available. Your shell prompt is this green thing you are seeing here. And once your shell prompt is available, that means that you can run the next command. The next command you are seeing here, this command is going to download Apache on our EC2 instance. So we are going to copy this command. And again, I'll come back to my party session and I'm going to right click to paste it. And I'm going to press enter. The next thing I'm going to do is run this next command. So this next command is CD. What CD means is change directory. And what I'm saying is I want to change my directory to the HTML directory. So in Linux directory is similar to a folder. All I'm saying here is I want to go into this HTML folder. So I'll copy this command and I'm going to paste it in my body session. Press enter. Previously, I was in the EC2 user folder, and once I change my directory, it is showing me that I am in the HTML directory. So, whatever current directory you are in, that is what it is going to show here. You can see I am in the HTML directory. The next command I'm going to run is the wget. wget is the Linux command you can use to download a file to your EC2 instance. Once you type wget, the next thing you have to type is the URL to where the file you are trying to download is located. So here we type wget and the URL is where the web files is located in my GitHub repository. So what I want you to do is copy this command. Once you copy this command, we are going to paste it here in our body session and press enter. And there you go, it has downloaded the file from my GitHub repository. You can see here it says it download a main.zip file. 
To see the main.zip file we just downloaded, if you type ls and press enter, you will see the file here. Once you have downloaded the web files from the GitHub repository into your EC2 instance, it is going to put the web files in this zip folder. That brings us to the next step, and this is an important step. Remember that we are in the HTML directory. In order for you to see your website, so what you must do is remove all the web files from this zip folder and put them in the HTML directory. That is what these next commands are doing. The first one, we are going to unzip the zip folder. Remember, when you have a zip folder, to be able to access what is in that zip folder, first you have to unzip it. So that's what this next command is doing. I'll copy it and I'm going to paste it in my poly session. Press enter. And it has unzipped that zip folder for me. If you have too many things on your screen and you want to clear your screen, the command to clear your screen is clear. So type clear and press enter and that is going to clear your screen remember we just unzip our zip folder by running this command so if you type ls to see what is in this directory you will see the zip folder and the unzip version of it now that we have unzipped the folder here the next thing we want to do is we want to copy all of our web files out of the unzip version into the html directory and that is what this next command is doing. So this next command will copy, CP stands for copy, will copy all the files out of the unzip version into the HTML directory. So I want you to copy this command and we are going to paste it in our body session and press enter. And that's all you need to do. So if you type ls again to see what is in your directory, I'll type ls, press enter. You can see now that we have all the web files in the HTML directory. We are in the HTML directory. And you can see in that directory, we have all of our web files, which are the same files you can see in my GitHub repository. The last thing we can do here is this main.zip folder we downloaded and the one we unzip, we really don't need them here. So what we can do is delete them. And that is what this next command is doing. So I'll copy this command and I'll paste it here. The command will remove this folder and this folder. If you remember the main.zip, that is the one we downloaded. And the techmax-main is the one we unzip. So once we have moved all the web files into the HTML directory, we really don't need these two folders anymore. So that is why we are using this command to remove them. Once you have pasted that command, I'll press enter. And if we type ls again to see what is in that directory, you can see that we no longer have the main.zip or the techmax-main folder here. The last thing we need to do is start our Apache server. So I want you to copy these two commands. Copy them and paste them here and press enter. And that is going to start your Apache server for you. Then minimize this. And you can also minimize this command. I'll go back to my management console. I'll select my EC2 instance again in the management console. Then under the public IPv4 address, remember this is your public IPv4 address. Copy it again. Once you copy it, I want you to open a new tab and paste it in there. And press enter. And there you go. We can access our website. So this is how you host an HTML website on an EC2 instance. If you have any questions or there is any part of this tutorial you don't understand, please leave a comment. And what we did here, you can use this method to host any HTML website on an EC2 instance. So that's all we need to do for this tutorial. The next thing we can do is terminate our EC2 instance. To terminate your EC2 instance, I'm going to come back to the management console then select your ec2 instance once you've select your ec2 instance we are going to select instance state up here and we are going to click terminate instance and it is going to give you this warning message click terminate and there you go we have successfully terminated our ec2 instance this is how you host an html website on an ec2 instance thank you and i'll see you in the next lecture bye